So what I am planning to do today is to go through this example. Much of the material we'll talk about today is also beneficial and applicable to your design. So we'll talk through some of that. And it will, my hope is to help you conceptualize what these flocculation basins look like and how to design them. So we have what is referred to as a cross flow horizontal shaft paddle wheel. This is a paddle wheel flocculator. Okay, it's actually the paddle wheel flocculator from Lansing Board of Water and Light. There is a center shaft right here. Okay. And there are arms in this case, <clears throat> you can see an arm here, you can see another arm here. Okay. And these are the blades that run crosswise. So these slowly rotate. And as they're rotating, they're slowly mixing the water and the chemicals in order to allow the particles to aggregate together so that they can grow in size. And this is just another drawing. It's a schematic drawing here. And again, in this case, notice we, we've got a center shaft. And these are rotating around. So we're designing this for a design flow of 25,000 meters cubed per day. We have a detention time of 45 minutes. So this information we would get from a jar test. Also from the jar test, we would obtain a GT value. So that's the G value that we've you used last week in the um, rapid mix problem. The criteria here would come from the 10 state standards. So the 10 state standards also referred to as the Glum standards, Great Lakes, Upper Mississippi River Basin. They are a group of 10 states that have come together that have decided upon a set of criteria for the design of water treatment plants. And there's also another design document for wastewater treatment plants. We will use tapered flocculation and three compartments of equal depth, depth. From the jar tests, we've determined that the first G in the first compartment would be 50 inverse seconds, second 20, and the third 10. And that gives us an average value of 26.7. And I'm going to try launching the poll. And let's see how this goes. OK, so to mention three compartment flocculator. Why do we use the three compartment flocculator? First answer, because we want particles to settle in the unit. We actually don't want particles to settle in the flocculation unit. We want particles to settle in the sedimentation basin that follows the flocculation unit. The next one, because we want to ensure that the particles, and actually, I'm not sure whether you can read the whole thing. Because we want, the, want to ensure that the particles do not break apart as they grow larger. That is the correct answer. So what we, we're creating these particles, so they aggregate together, we form larger particles. We want these larger particles to settle in a reasonable time period, typically two to four hours in the sedimentation basin. So if they start to break apart, then again, we've got smaller particles. We're kind of back to where we started the beginning, and those particles won't settle in the sedimentation unit. So the compartments are separated by a slotted 
redwood baffled fence. So we want, we ha we'll have these compartments here. They should be even, um, volume should be the same size, but we have these redwood fence baffles to slow flow so that we have good mixing in one of the, in, in each of the compartments. You're told that the floor of the basin is level. That's useful for our design. It makes, simplifies things. We want a 15 meter width because we already have a sedimentation basin. So we want this to adjoin the sedimentation basin. So this is, this criteria is really here just because your design one system, now you're adding this flocculation basin. The speed of the blades relative to the water is 75% of the peripheral blade speed. And we'll assume a temperature of 10 degrees. I've given you a <clears throat> number, number of other design criteria. These are all, as I've mentioned, rules of thumb. <clears throat> They're criteria that are determined based on experience. And I apologize for my voice. I got my COVID result back yesterday. Don't have COVID, but I do have really bad allergies. And my allergies are worse in the fall. So I apologize. <clears throat> so let's look at this system and try and conceptualize what we have. Okay. So I'm not going to draw the whole basin. We have a third compartment there. So we have cross flow. This is our width. And we said that that was 15.0. We have a center shaft here. And on that center shaft, we have the paddle wheel. And I'm just drawing this right now with two paddle wheels. <clears throat> As we move forward, we'll make some decisions. Okay. So on this paddle wheel, we would have one blade. And I'll just draw this with two blades. So on this side, we would also have two blades. So these, each of these are the blades. And these are rotating. Okay. We may have this as shown here with two arms. We may have four. So we could have another set of arms actually into or out of the plane of the di <clears throat> diagram. So we've got a redwood baffled fence separating the compartments. The first compartment has a G of 50 inverse seconds. The second one would be 20. Then we again would have the same thing. We have a center shaft and then we'd have the paddle wheel. And as we go through the design, you'll see that we'll make some decisions as far as <clears throat> the design of this system. Now, if we look at this into the diagram, into we look at our paddle wheel. Now, the way we've drawn this, so we just have two blades on each arm. Okay, and I've drawn this with four arms here. So, as I mentioned, we've got another set of arms into and out of the plane. The other thing to think about <clears throat> is in terms of our design. So this is our design criteria. We des we're designing for a design life of 25 years. So in 25 years, we have a design flow of 50,000 meters cubed per day. But today, we may only have, let's say, 15,000. Your treatment plan has to operate equally as well at 15 as it is at 25. 
You also need redundancy, and you'll need to think about this with your design. So as you start mini design one, which I haven't posted yet, but I will, um, need, you'll need to think about redundancy. One option is you want to make sure that you can provide sufficient flow with one system out of um, out of <clears throat> service for maintenance. So, so if we have a 25,000, okay, sorry, 25,000 meters cubed per day, we need, a, if we're treating at 25,000 meters cubed per day, we need a second unit <clears throat> so that we can meet the demand with one unit in service because this one is out for maintenance. You could also design it for three and maybe reduce the flow a little bit, um, but we'll just right now look at it with two. So we're gonna design it for a, <coughs> sorry, this is 50,000. So we're gonna design it with three, sorry. So let's do three. We can normally operate when we need it with two, but we have that backup. Okay, so we can always meet that 50,000 meters cubed. Okay, so we've already, this is the 50,000 divided by two. <clears throat> so we've provided redundancy. So always think about that. How many tanks do you need? You want it to operate properly in year one but it also has to operate properly in year 25. And that's one of the biggest challenges you'll find in the mini design. Because you need to think about both year one and year 25. And you need to think about meeting the design criteria in both of those years. So let's, um, we'll check this here. At the average, G, if we multiply this by the detention time, we get the GT value. And the question is, does it meet the requirements? Notice here, okay, we're at 72,000. And that meets the requirements for, and this is from table 6-6 six six in the textbook, that meets the requirements for both low turbidity color removals and also high turbidity solid removal. So in both places, that GT value is acceptable. The volume is that 25,000, since we divided the total flow in half, times the detention time with the appropriate conversion factors, and that is equal to 781 cubic meters. So we've set the width at 15 meters. Rule of thumb, and where do you get these? They're in the textbook. The rule of thumb, the depth should be between three and five meters. So let's choose a depth of four meters. In your designs, you this is exactly what you're gonna to need to do, but you, you'll need to iterate on a solution. You're not going to come up with a final solution the first time. My advice is do your designs in Excel, set it up nicely so that you can easily change the parameters because you will have to. So the length is just the width the volume divided by the length, the, by the width times the depth. And we're gonna start with a four meter depth. And this gives us a 13 meter length. So here's our cross flow. Here's our basin. So we're at 13 meters right here. Okay. 
each basin is 13 divided by three, and that would be 4.34. But your contractor wants all of the dimensions to no more than one tenth. So we're gonna change that to 4.3 meters. So then the length is 4.3 times three or 12.9 meters. So this is gonna becomes 12.9. And that's just because we've rounded off. So then the volume is 12.9 meters times 15.0 meters times 4.0 meters. And that is 774 cubic meters. So that's our volume. And then the detention time is just 774 meters cubed divided by our flow rate times 24 hours per day times 60 minutes per hour. And that is 45 minutes. It doesn't change the detention time in any significant. So the volume. Dr. Masson, sorry, would you be able to scroll up to the uh, formula on the other page? Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Just since I don't get to see you, so I don't get to see whether um, your understanding stop me at any point. The, the initial volume that we calculated was simply based on the results of the jar test at 45, okay? And then now we're sizing the reactor. We've got to make some decisions here. So we um, round off, okay? So that we only have our dimensions to a 10th of a decimal. And then we're just recalculating. So this is just a check. And then we need the volume of each compartment. So that is the 4.3 meters times the four meter depth times the 15 meter width. So the, this is our depth width and the length of the compartment and that is 258 meters cubed. The surface area of the compartment is just the length times the width. So that is 4.3 meters times 15.0 meters. And that is 64.5. So an area should be meters squared. Okay, so at this point now, we're moving into the actual design and we're gonna to start to make some assumptions. According to the textbook, with a basin depth of four meters, okay, and we have a design criteria that the basin, that the depth of the basin has to be one meter greater than the diameter of the paddle wheel. Okay, so the diameter of the paddle, paddle wheel is the 4.0 meters minus that one meter criteria. And that is equal to 3.0 meters diameter. So that is the maximum diameter that I can use of this paddle wheel. So looking back at our paddle wheel here, this is the diameter. So that maximum now we're set at three meters. The criteria is also stated that the minimum length of a stage or the compartment is the diameter of the paddle wheel plus the design criteria of one meter minimum between stages. Okay, so now we're looking at our compartment this way, okay? And it tells us that the diameter plus the design criteria, so we need at least a meter between stages. 
the, we've set the diameter now as 3.0 meters is our diameter plus one. Okay. So that gives us a 4.0 meter minimum length. That is less than the 4.3 that we have set. So we're good. So notice we're checking. Okay, and as you do your design, you're going to have to do multiple checks of your design criteria. There's a little sort of magic here, but it's not really magic. We're going to proceed with four paddle wheels per shaft. Okay, where did that come from? It would have come from an iteration. So I could have designed this with three, decided, wait, no, I, that doesn't work. Um, and I moved to four. I could have tried five and said, no, that's not going to work and reduced it. So looking back here, I drew this with two. There's actually four paddle wheels per shaft. So thinking that, okay, so here's the wall of the tank. And we have another wall on this side. I've drawn the shaft and on that I have four paddle wheels and hopefully I do this well enough. Okay, so we have four paddle wheels on the shaft. The criteria, again, where did you get this? From the textbook or from 10 state standards, which is in the design project folder. So we need 0.3 meter clearance from the, at the walls. We need one meter clearance between each of the paddle wheels. So the required clearance then is 0.3 times two plus one times three or 3.6. So that's the clearance. Now remember our width here is 15.0 meters. So let's start by assuming that each of these blades here are 3.0 meters. So we're going to make this assumption first. So there, if we take 3.0 meters times the four, the four paddle wheels plus the clearance, that results in a width of 15.6 meters. But we only have 15. So what do we do? We can either reduce the length of the blades. We could reduce the spacing, but we can't re reduce the spacing because we've already used the minimum clearance. We could also reduce the number of paddle wheels. Let's reduce the length of the, each paddle wheel. So we have 15.0 minus 3.6, that clearance, divided by four. And that gives us a length here of 2.85. Okay, and since these are manufactured outside they're, and they're purchased, we will stick with 2.85 meters. So that gives us the length of each of these blades. So each one is 2.85. Our diameter here is 3.0. Yeah, why is the diameter only three meters? Because that's what we set back here. 
So right here. Oh, OK. Yeah. OK. Thank you. There's a lot to remember. And my advice is when you're creating your Excel spreadsheets, um, when you start getting to the design criteria and you've met the design criteria, my advice is highlight it. So you have a little check. I've met the design criteria. Put the design criteria actually as a notation in your spreadsheet. It'll make it a lot easier because like I said, you're, it's an iterative process. You're not gonna, you're not gonna get the first answer. Um, you've got design criteria. You've got to meet those design criteria. You've got design flows. You've got in your, I'm not gonna tell you how many basins you need. I'm not gonna tell you how many parallel units you have. So all that is your, it's part of your decision-making process. So the more you can annotate your Excel spreadsheets, the easier it will be. When I had to do this, we had to do it with a calculator and we did it, you just kept re redoing your problems. And that makes things even more challenging. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the criteria we're gonna use. Again, this is all part of the decision-making process. So we've got the shaft, we've shown the four paddle wheels per shaft. Now on each paddle wheel, so this is the center shaft, we will have four arms. So each one of these is an arm. Okay, this makes up our paddle wheel. We're gonna put three blades on each arm. So each one of these is a blade and the whole thing is the paddle wheel. So again, we have another rule of thumb. The total paddle wheel blade area on the horizontal shaft should not exceed 25% of the total cross-sectional area and at least 15% to ensure adequate mixing. So we want this to be 15 to 25%. If your paddle wheel area is too great, you have excessive rotational flow. And what happens? Why is that a problem? Break up the particles. Exactly. So this will break up the particles. Okay. If the area is too low and we don't have adequate mixing, what happens? Will the particles not form? Exactly. Okay. And I actually missed some of the chat. So let me go back. Um, Okay, was there a place where I wrote meters squared, meters cubed instead of squared? So let's just check and we'll fix that. Thank you for catching that. Okay. And, okay, so the blade area assumed, we're not taking into account the thickness of the blade. It, it's relatively um, thin. So when we're looking at the blade area, we're looking at the width of the blade times the length. So, so this is our blade, okay? So we have the length, which we said was 2.85 meters. And the width of the blade and the typical width is 10 to 15 centimeters. So we need to pick a width. We're gonna choose 11 centimeters. Why did I choose 11? Because I tried 10 and it wasn't sufficient. I tried 12 and it was too much. Basically, I'm gonna iterate again. So the width is 0.11 meters. 
times the length, we have three blades per arm, four arms per wheel, and four wheels per shaft. And that is 15.05 meters squared. So that is the total blade area. We have a cross flow. So we have 15.05 meters squared. We're going to divide that by the 15.0 meters by the width times the depth. And that we're using the width because we have cross flow. That is equal to 2.25. So 25%. So we're good. Okay. We're right at the limit, but we're at 25%. So now when we're thinking about this shift, so this is our, or thinking about the arm, this is our shift. Okay. We will put one blade at the periphery, so at the far end. And we're going to put it at one third points. So one third, this would be at one third. So one third is 0 0.5. That's OK. Why one? OK. Why am I? dividing 1.5 by 3. This is out here. This is 1.5. Why 1.5? Exactly. It's the length of each arm. Okay, remember, the diameter is 3. So the length of each arm is 1.5. So it's out at the far end. The <clears throat> radii, OK? The middle of each blade is, let's do the far end one, is that 1.5 minus 0.11, the width divided by 2. So this distance here is 1.445. Okay. 1.0 or 1 third of 1.5 is 0 sorry, minus 0.11 over 2, and that is 0.945. So this radius here is 0 0.945. And then 0 0.5 minus 0.11 over 2 is 0.445. So that gives us this third radius rate. So this is R1. This is would correspond to R2. And this is equal to R3. OK. So using the power, the power equation, which. Could you go back to that really fast? Sorry, I was finishing copying it. <laughs> sure, not a problem. It's not exactly the best drawing. I apologize. Let's see if we can. OK, so this corresponds to R1. And that is equal to 0.445. This is right in the middle here. This corresponds to R2. And that is 0.945. Notice it's right to the middle here. And then to the middle here is R3. And that is equal to 1.445. OK. Thank will you. This be, yes, this will be available on Plan Kappa. OK. Normally, I have not been posting the markups, but this one is complicated enough um, that I'll put this one on Plan Kappa.
that way you can focus on listening rather than trying to write down everything. Uh, okay. So the power equation is the same equation we used for rapid mixing. We said that the temperature is 10 degrees C. With your designs, you'll need to also make sure that if you're using a surface water and the temperature varies from summer to winter, the system has to operate at both of those temperature extremes. So the power is equal to 50 inverse seconds times the dynamic viscosity times the volume per compartment. So the three is for the three compartments. And that is equal to 845 Newton meters per second or 845 watts. And this is per shaft. The velocity of the paddles relative to the water can be estimated using this equation right here. Uh, okay, so this is the velocity of the paddles relative to the water. K is a constant, it's 0.75 and a few, remember way back at the beginning we said that the velocity of the paddles, paddles relative to the water was 75%. R is the radius to the center line of each of the paddles, which is what we just calculated. D is the diameter to the center line. So you can see why these two equations differ by a factor of two. Did I? Yes. So I used 50. This is for compartment one. Notice if we were designing this for compartment two, we would be using 20 inverse, oh, sorry. And thank you, I forgot the squared. So the difference between those two equations is just a two, factor of two. And N is the rotational speed. So we're gonna multiply this by 0.445. Problem is, is we don't know N. 0.9 four, five. Again, we don't know and we don't we haven't determined the rotational speed yet. So in all cases, we have a velocity, but we don't have a rotational speed. The equation that we will use is right here. Okay, so we have need a second equation for the power. Because we have one equation and one unknown, which means we can't solve that equation. So using equation 619, we can, we have power. Okay. We then can solve for the velocity of the paddle. Now, table 6-7 gives you the coefficient of drag values for a variety of paddle wheels. So if the length to which ratio is five, then the coefficient of drag is 1.2. If it is 20, then the coefficient of drag is 1.5. And if it's significantly greater than 20, then the coefficient of drag is 1.9. So this is just from this table here. So we have coefficient of drag close to 20. So we use, sorry, a L to, sorry, length to width ratio of the paddle of around 20. So we will use a coefficient of drag of 1.5. We can expand that previous equation, equation 619 into this form. So we have a term here. Okay? We have an area of each of the sets of paddles and we have a velocity of each of the sets of paddles. The power input to each wheel is 211 watts. So where did that come from? 
It's just the 845 divided by four. Okay, because we have four paddle wheels on each shaft. And that is equal to the 1.5 times the density of water at 10 degrees C divided by two. Now, this is equal to the area of our paddle wheels. Okay. Now, here's our shaft. We have four blades at each radii. So we'll multiply this, the four blades, times the width of each blade, times the length of each blade, times the 2.1 cubed plus 4.45 cubed plus 6.81 cubed times n cubed. So where did that come from? Back here. Okay, so notice this is, okay. so we've got V1 here. So all I've done is I've done the multiplication. Notice V here. Each of these terms are cubed. Okay. So this, I can factor out. Let's just write it this way. I can factor out A because A1 equals A2 equals A3. So we'll factor out A, and then we're going to multiply this by V1 cubed plus V2 cubed plus V3 cubed. Okay. So that's why I factored out the area here. And this term here is just the multi <clears throat> multiplication of each of these terms. Okay. So if we solve that, this gives us n is equal to 0.082 inverse seconds. And that is 0.23 meters per second, 0.49 meters per second, and 0.74 meters per second. And this needs to be within the range of 0.15 to 1 meters per second. And that's from table 6-7. So I've solved, I, by doing this, I've got two equations, one unknown, so I can solve for the rotational speed. And we're within that, so we can check that off. Okay. The rotational, the, we, the rotational, <clears throat> sorry, the maximum rotational speed is this 0 0.082 revolutions per second times 60 seconds per minute, and that is 4.9 revolutions per minute. So this is 4.9. Okay. All of our sh other, sh the other two shafts are moving at a slower speed. Now, depending on the temperature, you may need to reduce the rotational speed. Because remember, density and viscosity are both dependent on temperature, so that will impact your design. So you design it for the lowest temperature, and then if you have a variable speed drive, you can then reduce the speed and if we have a one to four variable speed drive, we can go from 1.4 revolutions per minute to roughly five revolutions per minute. Okay. The motor power that we need is typically between one and a half to two times the water power. And this is true for 
a paddle wheel flaculator. So we'll assume 60% efficiency. So our motor power is equal to 845 watts divided by six or 1,400 watts. So that's the power that we need for the motor in order to drive that shaft at the speeds we just determined. So just to reiterate here, okay. So again, this is our blade. We said that this length is 2.85 meters. The width we said was 0.11 meters. Our radius R1 to the center line is 0.445. Here to the center line is 0.945. And to the center line here is 1.445. Four, four, five meters. Okay. And we have four of these on a center shaft. Does this make sense? Questions? Could you draw this? How does this fit into the larger design? Here's our lake or a river. How does this fit into the larger design? What's the first unit we would have? So typically in a water treatment plant, we typically don't have grit removal because we don't have that kind of sandy, uh, fine abrasive material. So we have some sort of screening if you haven't done the scavenger hunt yet, or if you have done the scavenger hunt, okay, if you're on campus and you know where the rapids are on the river? Anybody not know where the rapids are? Okay. Across from the rapids, if you're on the south side of the river and you look across at the rapids, you can see a structure and you can see several bars. It looks like a base, it is a bar screen. That is the river intake to the irrigation system that uses the water from the red cedar to irrigate the grounds. The weir that forms the rapids is actually a dam and it creates a reservoir behind, it's a rel small reservoir, but it is a reservoir upstream of the weir, of the rapids. So the water is deeper in that upstream region, which provides sufficient depth to pump water from the river. That gives you one of your answers for your scavenger hunt. Go check it out. So we have screens. Then we have our rapid mix. So we're adding our coagulant there. Now we have our flocculation basin. Got our paddle wheel. Got four wheels on each shaft. We've got our baffle in between. And then from there into a sedimentation basin. And then typically filtration, disinfection, storage, and discharge to the distribution system. Questions about what we covered? Um, I have a question. Sure. Um, so, seeing for the 
uh, P you said is equal to 221 volt. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, what's the relative like velocity of pedal with respect to Floyd? Like sure. where, where where do you get uh, this VP number from? Sorry, this number is the 845 divided by four. Oh, there. okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's Thank just you. this. Yeah, it's just the number we calculated earlier, and we have four. That's the 845 was for the entire shaft, and we have four wheels on each. Okay, so also the power import to water per wheel is like 845 divided by four, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay.